It's the damnest thing I've ever seen. Everybody's angry. Just dump the damn water on the ground. Not even the bugs got to use it. Foolish. Pretty foolish, stupid. Wayne Grigsby is showing us one of his community's springs, the source of the purest mountain water around. The water is about 42 degrees coming out of the ground. And the source of a heated controversy over water waste the McLeod GM angrily blames on the state. And that story just goes on and on. Just... And he makes no secret. Pretty disgusting. How he feels about it. Oh, he's so disgusted, I could eat dirt. Where he's standing is a creek bed that's been dry for years, decades even. But when the state water board ordered McLeod, a small town in the shadow of Shasta, to stop diverting water from two of its three springs, this is exactly where Wayne says all that crystal clear spring water went right into the ground, a complete waste at 2,500 gallons a minute. Just run through the damn forest and water the trees and leach into the ground. Didn't benefit anybody. It's obviously not what the state intended when in June it issued a curtailment order to McLeod, a senior water rights holder. In theory, when McLeod stopped diverting, the water would flow downstream, eventually to the Sacramento Valley. What actually happened, Wayne says, is that nobody got to use millions of gallons of water since it flowed into the forest and had no way of reaching Lake Shasta. He says the creek that usually carries the water dried up, killing fish, and he says nobody at the state would listen to him. They do what the hell they want. But he didn't dare defy the order and risk potentially crippling fines. I feel like it's almost like a damn dictatorship. Weeks later, in mid-July, after he called numerous state agencies, several lawmakers and county officials, the water board rescinded its order, allowing McLeod to take the two springs back online. Wayne says on the condition the town didn't use any of the water and passed it downstream. Disgusting. In the real world, which we live in the real world, I'd fire all those damn people. Start all over. What's ironic is McLeod says most of the water from the two springs ends up here in Lake Shasta and sent down to us anyway, which isn't lost on locals in town. They should be very angry, Sacramento, San Francisco, all those areas, anywhere the aqueduct leads to. The amount of water was mind-boggling. Here they're trying to tell everybody to cut back 25%, and they throw away 2,500 gallons per minute. That's a lot of water. So let's add this up, 2,500 gallons a minute for 60 minutes, for 24 hours, for four weeks. That adds up to 100 million gallons of water that went to waste, or enough to water your lawn for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for more than six years. I would tell them they're idiots. <laughs> Don't they have people trained to see what they're doing? I'm wondering why they're doing this during a drought. Wayne is so incensed with the state and his community board, which he says urged him to disobey the order all along, he's resigning and says he plans to retire. So I told him, I said, you got the wrong guy working for you. I told him right then and there, I would give you my resignation letter and I'm out of here. That was a firestorm. That was a firestorm. You were in a firestorm. A firestorm sparked from a smoldering hot spot. Crews douse flames that cross to the other side of Highway 120 in a matter of minutes. With the erratic winds, all that heat, all those embers swirling around, everything is very volatile and go up very easily. U.S. Forest Service upgraded the rim fire to a priority one incident or to the top of the totem pole, so to speak, a move that allows additional resources. You've got so many resources here. I mean, as I said, from across the nation, our fire camp has literally tripled. Since the fire started Saturday, nine buildings have been destroyed, including two homes. Hotels, campgrounds, and homes have been evacuated. Neighbors in the Pine Mountain Lake community are under an evacuation advisory. Some estimate the out-of-control blaze is only a mile away from their home. You just hope for the best, pray for the best, and that's all we can say. Firefighters say swirling winds only making matters worse as the fire continues to break off in different directions. This fire is, in a sense, it's a monster. 
you want this more than anything you've wanted this whole Academy Sheehan. Calling this a physical challenge is an understatement. It's two minutes, baby. You ready? Grueling challenge is more like it. Following 14 weeks at the Academy, these 34 Metro Fire recruits are taking their final test, the Firefighter Combat Challenge. Yes! Yes! Uh, tired? <laughs> Winded? We talked to Jared Greider right after he finished. It's a gas. It's like uh, running as many sprints as you can and then running with something heavy at the end. Go! The course starts with recruits hauling a hose up a staircase and pulling another hose bundle up from the ground. Come on, big bites, big bites! After running back down the stairs, the recruits hit a sled with a sledgehammer. They run around a group of cones, grab a hose, and pull it 100 feet and spray a target. The final challenge is dragging a 165-pound dummy to the finish line. Go, baby, go, baby, go, baby! It's an individual test, but a team effort to get every man across that line. Feed off that energy, bitch! Feed off that energy! This is 14 weeks where they have grown really tight bonds together, but this needs to carry on throughout their career. Get, get your butt down, get your butt down. Chris Armstrong has been whipping these guys into firefighter shape. Turn it over faster than that, Edward. Turn it over faster. Not just scheduling physical fitness, but surprising the recruits, too, because of the job they'll be doing. I mean, it could be 3 o'clock in the morning, and you're sound asleep, and within five minutes, you're at max effort. It was a great challenge. I don't think it's the hardest. It's not the hardest thing we've done at the Academy. Former UC Davis football player Callan Baird said the Academy was more mentally tough. This is what we live for. This is what it's all about. Every, every opportunity we have to push ourselves and drive, we're going to take it. After finishing the challenge, the recruits are rewarded. It's their custom safety gear. The men may hit the streets in separate assignments, but will always be part of recruit class 14-1. This place has been open since 1860. It's truly one of those bars where everybody knows your name. For more than a century, the trap has been serving beer on this bar. Frosty cold. So I've been coming here for a number of years, actually, since July 1st, 1975, to be exact. But just next door, construction has been drowning out that familiar bar ambiance. As a new school is being built. It seems sort of an odd mix to put an educational institution right next to a, a local neighborhood bar. Crews are breaking ground on Brookfield School, a private school which will include preschool up to eighth grade. The property butts right up against Sacramento's oldest dive bar. It's been designated a historic landmark. It's a bar. It is a drinking establishment. And I just, I wholeheartedly believe that it's not a place to sit next to a school. Part owner Veronica Crudo says they weren't told a school would be built here until it was too late. I was absolutely under the impression that it was a no-go. So CBS 13 reached out to the city to get answers. They say the project has gone through the proper approval process and anyone within 500 feet of the property was notified. You kind of lose the flavor of the pocket, which was that, that rural feel, and it's, it's really kind of tragic. But bar owners and longtime customers say alcohol in school just don't mix, and they fear once the new school is in, this old nostalgic bar <laughs> will be forced out. The people that come here want to see this place stand. The school is scheduled to open this fall with more than 400 students. I have had migraines since I was 13. I, it would be hard to summarize the incapacitating uh, effect of them. Zoe Sohn hardly remembers a time that she didn't have debilitating migraines. And I couldn't look at magazine print, it was too small. I couldn't look at my computer, it was too bright. I couldn't, you know, any a glare off of a windshield or something just in, in, in an instant I could have a migraine. The simplest things could set her migraines in motion, causing her to become dizzy, nauseous, keeping her from her work in publishing, her husband, three children, and life in general. 
She says she was at the end of her rope. I was in bed with having, having had one of these episodes of spinning, and I thought, I'm going to go to three more appointments, and then I'm going to kill myself. And, I, and then I caught myself and thought, okay, that's, uh, that's a little extreme, but I felt like I was a burden to my husband. Enter Sheldon Lowe, a Bay Area physical therapist for the past 35 years. Zoe was referred to Lowe for a neck issue, but quickly found the treatment could double as a way to give her some migraine relief through a simple head massage. It's my theory, and from my experience, I'm taking pressure off the scalp nerves, and that's taking away the impingement and the, the causative agent of the headaches. Zoe says the treatments were the answer to her prayers. So we wanted to know, how does it work? I'm actually working into the scar tissue and trying to break it down. It's almost like control shearing, like if you're peeling an orange and trying to play that game where you keep the orange peel together and you're trying to work it around so you're not breaking the peel apart. Lowe showed us first on my hand so you can see the pressure that's applied, then on my head. You try to find an abnormal lump or bump and if it's sensitive that's even better and I would actually push into it and then maybe twist a bit or even pull down like that or come into it sideways like that, go that way. But anything that's lumpy is not your skull. It's not bone. It's not normal. It's not normal. Since Lowe says the lumps aren't normal, we asked him how those lumps and bumps develop. He says it starts as a small child when we fall. Once you hit your head and it raises a bruise, the bruise causes a little scarring, and you don't end up stretching it out. It just actually gets tighter as you get older. Lowe's studies have shown that over time, as the scarring cannot be stretched, it gets tighter, cranking down on the nerve endings in the scalp and contributing to migraine pain. It's all anatomically related to these adhesions, on the scar tissue adhesions on your scalp. For Zoe and multiple other migraine patients that Lowe has seen, several massage treatments have led to great relief. Eventually, he was pressing on my head and um, lightly and I felt worse and that actually to me was reassuring because I thought if he can make this happen then he's into the into the the box the control box now she says the frequency of the migraines has been dramatically reduced doctors usually treat migraines with medication dietary changes and rest just to name a few so we came to UC Davis to ask the headache experts could this treatment really cure migraines? Dr. Mark Lenartz is a fellow of the American Headache Society and runs the headache clinic at UC Davis Medical Center. He believes the treatment could work. Freeing uh, inflammatory uh, fluids and, and humors and, and freeing the adhesions between tissues uh, is a very important point and it's worthwhile looking into. And with more than 38 million migraine sufferers in the U.S. trying to find relief, why hasn't something like this been discovered before? Probably not enough people really practicing and doing that on a regular basis. But Dr. Lenartz also believes that while there may not be enough scientific evidence now that says it could cure migraines, he's not ruling anything out in the future. Their conclusion is we need more scientific evidence, but it's encouraging. And so I think it's worthwhile going further in. For Zoe, she's just thrilled it's working for her right now. I'm so much freer to do things now.